Hello and welcome to a basic turntable setup. You know many people have rediscovered a love for vinyl LPs or are discovering uh, a love for vinyl um, initially. Uh, this is their first time they may have been given a turntable by a family member who, who used to love vinyl or it's somebody who has just moved away from it for many years and, and wants to relive that special sound. The goal of this video is to help with a basic setup of a turntable. Um, many people are daunted by the terminology they find on the internet when they, they see things like vertical tracking force and azimuth and uh, setting up a, you know, a cartridge, etc. Uh, they basically are under the impression that you just throw an album on the uh, turntable and just play. Well, you can do that, but if you really want to get the best sound out of your turntable, a few basic steps will ensure that you get the very best. Um, this is something that's not rocket science, it's just basic turntable setup. A couple of tools you need, um, we'll, we'll get to in a moment, but uh, first, let's go to the basics. Uh, most turntables are pretty much, uh, have the same controls and um, whether they're manual or automatic is really irrelevant. Um, there's lots of information on the internet that you can find out. You can go to audiokarma.org and get lots of help there. You can do searches uh, on Google or Bing and find out uh, just what they have out there in terms of uh, terminology. And, and some of that can be very confusing. I hope to take the confusion out of it. All right, so let's start with the basics, the parts on a turntable. The uh, part that spins around and uh, holds your album, that's the platter. The platter is generally made of some kind of metal. It will have a, um, um, you know, see the metal platter? It'll have a mat on it, and it's generally rubber. Um, I have a felt mat on top of this, and that, that provides a slight deadening effect and kind of a smooth surface for the, uh, for the LP. Um, don't need to go into details what that's for, but just so that you know when the motor spins at 33 and a third revolutions per minute, that's how you play your album. If you're playing uh, 45, it would spin at 45 RPMs. The tone arm. The tone arm is the part here that holds the cartridge. The cartridge is on the front, and um, this is the part that actually picks up the sound from the record grooves, transmits it through the cartridge, through the tone arm, through wires, out to the back to your RCA plugs, which uh, you'll eventually set up and, and attach to your receiver. To do your basic setup, your best bet is to um, ensure that you have a nice, wide, clean workspace. Um, not the place where you're actually going to set your turntable because um, that may not that may be a little restrictive. Um, so you want to get the, the setup done first and then move it into where you're going to work on it. Some other parts of the uh, turntable itself, and let's Let's get a little zoom going in on here. And uh, okay, I think that that will help. The rear of the tone arm, the, the part rounded in the back, that's your counterweight, and that balances the weight of the tone arm. Um, we're going to show you how to actually set the proper gram weight for the arm so that you're, you're not applying too much pressure or not too little pressure to the LP itself. Um, this dial here, they, they vary in, in different spots on a turntable, is known as your anti-skate. What is the anti-skate? Well, basically, when a tone arm and a cartridge ride on an LP, a uh, centripetal force will draw it in towards the center. And uh, in doing so, it could ride the, the right inner edge of the groove. What the anti-skate does is it, it puts a, a counter force uh, to that so that you're riding in the center of the groove, that you're not pulling inside. At the same time, setting too much anti-skate would make it ride to the, to the outer groove, and we don't want to do that either. So some basic parts, obviously your dust cover. Um, you may or may not have one. And for the purposes of, of this video, um, 
what we'll want to do if you have the ability to do this easily is we're going to remove the dust cover and get it out of the way. Mine just happens to, uh, on this particular table, be easy to remove. So I'm going to take that off and I'm going to place it in a safe place out of the way. Um, Turntable dust covers tend to get scratched very easily. They're just a, an acrylic uh, plastic and um, many of the older ones you'll see are, are scraped up. And There's various ways to make them better. Um, you can use a polishing compound, etc. And there's many things out there. Okay, so basic setup. Let's go into that. We've shown you the parts on the arm and there's really a step-by-step -step process for doing basic turntable setup. And you'll just need a couple of little tools. First off, let's start with the uh, head shell. And I'm going to give you a, a close-up of the head shell itself. The head shell actually sits on the end of the tone arm. And it's the part that holds the cartridge. And we're going we're gonna to lift that up. And on the back of the head shell is a little collar that if you turn it like a screw and loosen it, you can just lift the head shell right out. And I'm going to give you a close-up of that. You can see there's the underside with the cartridge and there's the top side. Okay. Now the cartridge is held in by two screws and uh, they're different lengths but generally they're pretty standard. Um, when you purchased your turntable or were given a turntable, you, you may have already had a cartridge mounted in there and that, that's a good thing. Um, if you didn't, if you purchased a cartridge or needed to um, uh, replace one that was there, they all basically go in the same way. They're, they're screwed in, generally in a central location. There, there is an overhang distance, but I'm not going to go into that right now. And there's four wires you'll see on the back of the cartridge and they are uh, for your left and right channels and they, they operate this way. The um, red and green are your right channel and the red is your hot, green is your ground. The white and the blue is your left channel and the white is your hot, blue is your ground. And th this is kind of important to know if you don't want to get these wires crossed up. And generally when you buy a cartridge or you have a turntable um, guide, they tell you what those pin connections should be. And very important to make sure they're secure. When you do pin connections, what you'll want to do is make sure that you don't try to force them on with your fingers. Your fingers won't necessarily fit in there. Use a nice pair of, of really small needle nose pliers to, um, to get these in there. Okay, and you would slide them on and make sure they're, they're on there firmly. If they're wiggling around, you may get a bad connection. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, there's also, I uh, just wanted to mention, there's also a fifth wire that runs through your turntable. And that is your ground wire. It's very important uh, to eliminate any hums or anything along those lines that that ground wire, which runs through the tone arm and out the back, um, is attached to a receiver. The receiver will have a ground lug on it if it's made for a turntable. If it's not, you'll have to get a, a, a phono stage or preamp that, uh, that allows for that. Okay, so we talked about the wires on the cartridge and uh, we have an audio technical cartridge on here right now. And the screws on there um, pretty much have this in place for, you know, fairly centered on the head shell. And different head shells and different tone arms have what they know, call an overhang distance. An overhang distance is where the stylus tip should be past the center spindle. And the center spindle is, is that center um, protrusion that where the album goes. Um, and I'm going to show you that in a second. Let's zoom in on this. And I'm going to demonstrate this in a second. So when people talk about um, overhang, I'm going to put the cartridge back on. When they talk about overhang, they talk about how far, and I'm just going to set that gently down there just for a moment, how far the stylus tip reaches past that center spindle. And they'll give you, you know, uh, measurements such as 15 millimeters, 18 millimeters, whatever. It's very difficult to measure, you know, to, to have that center spot and, and try and figure out where it goes. Um, you know, this is why some turntable manufacturers with their tone arms will give you what's known as an overhang gauge. And what the overhang gauge does is lets you 
actually outside of the arm. And I'm going to take this off again. Um, the gauge would fit on this back collar and have a mark on it that would tell you where your stylus tip would be. And that would show you how far forward or back you would be in your head shell. Um, not really a big issue because we're going to align this so that we have the right overhang and so that we have the right play across the album. Okay, so first things first. Let us zoom out for a moment. The first thing you're going to want to do is if you have any sort of anti-skate on your turntable, and as I said, most turntables do, you want to set that to zero. You don't want to have any opposing force going on at this point. The back of the turntable, um, as I mentioned before, has the counterweight. And the counterweight, and we're going to we're going to zoom in on that for a second. Okay, the counterweight. The counterweight is just a weight that allows the arm to balance up and down and have the proper uh, a pressure applied to the LP. Uh, you'll see them generally, they have a weight and a scale. And while the scale can be fairly accurate, it's not the most accurate way to balance a tone arm. Most tone arm manufacturers will tell you to um, try and set this for a zero weight in such a way that, that the arm will float. And I'm going to show you that in a second, that the arm basically floats over the tone arm rest. And I'm um, going to zoom out here and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So if we look at the tone arm, we'll see that right now I've, I've basically got it set. It's got a little float to it. And it's basically, it's not quite touching the tone arm rest. It's, it's at a level position. And if I give it a little push, you'll see how it will bounce up and down. But eventually it seeks a level. That would kind of be your zero level. But I don't find this to be the most accurate way of setting things because now the next step would be to turn the weight to the actual gram weight recommended for your cartridge. So let's say it was 1.5. Okay, so I'm setting it for 1.5 and technically this should weigh 1.5. Okay, I have, and this is something I highly recommend you purchase, is an electronic gram scale. An electronic gram scale, um, you can have these for about 10 bucks on uh, most um, you know, auction sites and, and different places. You'll, you'll turn this on and electronically, um, let's zero this thing out. It will give you a zero reading and you'll be able to put it on the turntable itself. And again, in the position it's in, we want to zero it out. Let's get it there. Um, this will give you a more accurate reading. So as I said, I, I turn the dial to 1.5. When I move the needle over very gently and place it on this gram scale, I come up with a reading of 1.68. So if, if optimal gram weight for this cartridge was 1.5, we'd be a little heavy. Um, a little heavy means more wear on your albums, more wear on your um, cartridge. If it was light, too light can actually cause problems also. So with that said, I'm going to lift this up again and I'm going to move that weight, just, just kind of turn it back a little bit so that there's a little more weight on the back and I'm going to measure it now. And I'm at 1.48, 1.49 actually, which is uh, really a, a good, you know, pretty accurate if I'm looking to get to um, 1.5. Uh, I could play with it some more and make it exact, but you know, um, one one hundredth of a gram is not going to hurt us. Um, tenth of a gram might be a different story. Okay, so definitely a, a worthy purchase is the electronic gram scale. Ten bucks, lifesaver. Okay, so now we've set the actual gram weight for this cartridge. And, um, you know, people at that point would say, oh, I'm good to go and throw their album on there and start playing. But if you really want to get the optimal sound, you want to make sure that your cartridge is aligned as close to as possible so that it's reading the album the way the album was cut. The album was cut by a machine, very similar to a lathe, where those grooves were carved. If you are not reading those grooves correctly, your sound will, will not be optimal. So the other purchase 
you should make is what's known as a, a turntable protractor. And this one just happens to be a mirrored protractor. And it is uh, what they call a bare walled style. Bare walled is where you will verify two points, okay, on that cartridge, um, on, the, on the platter, to make sure that you are perfectly aligned. Um, it's relatively inexpensive, about $18. Again, well worth it if you want optimal sound from your turntable. Um, the hole here is made to go on your center spindle, and I'm gonna demonstrate that. Okay, and, and before I, I go into that, I just wanted to point something out. Now, when you get this um, protractor, this mirrored protractor, you'll see, and I'm gonna get a close up here. Okay, you'll see that there's a center dot at each point. And that is your crosshairs, that's where you would want the stylus tip to rest. Now, it's a flat surface and it's as slippery as ice. So, one of the things I've done to improve on this is to use a small center punch to make a, a divot, a, a small um, non-abrasive hole so that the stylus tip can actually rest in that hole and, and um, not move around. This will let us then verify that the cartridge is aligned correctly. So as I mentioned before, we would place this on the uh, platter. And uh, very delicately, what we want to do, and, and prior to doing that, um, here's what you need to do, because you're going to have to adjust the head of this um, cartridge. Uh, actually, adjust the cartridge itself. As I mentioned before, the cartridge has uh, several screws, two screws that hold it in place and hold it squarely. Using a very small screwdriver, generally they're supplied with cartridges or you may have one, loosen that cartridge head just a little bit. Not enough that the uh, cartridge is actually going to move around on its own, but that with applying a little pressure, you can move it left, right, front or back. And that'll become apparent why in a moment. So I've given that a little loosen and I'm going to reattach it to the um, arm. And we're still at the 1.5 grams, so we've got that all set. I'm going to move it to the first location. And we're gonna get a picture of that in a moment. Okay, so it's sitting, the stylus tip is actually sitting in that little divot I was telling you about. Okay, so if you notice now, looking uh, from straight on, the actual stylus is in that small divot and we are perfectly straight on that line that would be uh, considered a vertical line. Uh, we're lined up dead on on that and what we're lining up is what's the stylus tip is actually attached to something called a cantilever and that cantilever we want that to be perfectly straight on that line. Conversely we want the body of the cartridge to be aligned not only with the two outer um, uh, vertical lines, but that front horizontal line. If one end of the cartridge was, uh, you, you see the line that's just in front of the cartridge, the green cartridge body. If it was uh, past it on one side and behind it on the other, we'd know we were off center a little bit and we'd wanna give that cartridge a little twist. That's why we loosened the screws um, on the cartridge and head shell so that we could give it a little twist. This one just happens to be perfectly aligned because I had pre-aligned this. Now, here's the part that confuses many people. We want to do the same thing with the second um, spot and this is going to verify that we are absolutely spot on. But here's the thing, many people think that they move the cartridge from one spot to the other and I'm going to do that and show you. You notice it doesn't it doesn't line up because we're not following an arc. These are two distinct lines. So what you're gonna to wanna to do to uh, make this line up, and I'm gonna show you this, is you're gonna lift this up from the first spot, which we know is verified, and we're gonna put it to the second spot. And I'm gonna let that stylus tip just very gently, very, very gently sit in that hole. Okay, so now I'm gonna move the camera. Okay, so now you see at point B, we're also dead on. Dead on on the vertical line, ver dead on uh, the cartridge body and the horizontal line. That tells us that our cartridge is perfectly aligned to play our LPs. Um, at this point, we would want to now lift that um, 
arm back and retighten those screws. Not too tight, but just uh, to, to firm them up so that there's no movement. Okay, so now at this point we've set our um, tracking gram weight, VTF as it's called, vertical tracking force. We've set our alignment so that we know that going across the album we will be tracking properly in the groove. Um, next thing you'd want to do, the next step is, I had mentioned anti-skate earlier, and we had set this to zero so that um, it did not interfere left or right with any of our adjustments. Okay, the recommendations are to set anti-skate to the same um, dial level as what your VTF, vertical tracking force is. So that was 1.5 grams. We've set the dial on here to 1.5. Um, something interesting about anti-skate is that with various different units, that may be too much, that may be too little. The concept is we don't want the album, or I should say the tone arm, to get pulled in towards the center spindle. Conversely, we don't want it fighting with a counterforce that's too strong. Some of the things that people do to uh, verify their anti-skate is to either use a test album or find a blank section on uh, an album and see what happens with the cartridge um, and the tone arm. You know, lower it onto that blank area. If it slides in towards the spindle, you don't have enough anti-skate. If it moves away from the spindle, you've got too much. If it just sort of sits in one position, um, you're spot on. Okay, so we're 90% there. Uh, last thing we want to check is, uh, le actually, uh, last couple of things we want to check. Uh, the next one is called azimuth. Azimuth is how the cartridge aligns, um, whether it, it's tilted one way or another. Um, I, you know, I'll give you an example. If I were to loosen this collar and, and not quite have this mounted and, and I had it cocked like that, well, our azimuth would be off. Um, you know, the same thing if it was cocked inward. You want that to be the, the actual body of the cartridge what, that you can see to be 100% level over the album. And, and we're going to put an album on here so that we can do this. This is not something you would, you would put your um, tone arm needle on the um, platter itself or a mat. That wouldn't be good. You want to actually test this with an album. And I just happen to have a uh, Super Tramp album here that we're going to use for the test. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower that onto a spot. I, I can pick an inner spot, you know, as long as I'm not sliding across the grooves. And I'm going to sight by eye is that straight. Now, your table may or may not have what's known as um, an azimuth adjustment, which would allow you to, to move that um, cartridge. So hopefully you're, you're aligned correctly, your screws are pulled in uniformly. Um, some cartridges have a little, or I should say some head shells and tone arms have a little play to them that just lets you give you that li little twist you may need. Um, I've checked that and it's it's pretty straight. And I'm gonna give you a close-up view of, of what I'm talking about. Okay, one of the last things we wanna check is how the tone arm is in terms of, is it level when it's on the album or is it uh, higher in the front or lower in the front? Um, this is known as your VTA or vertical tracking angle. Um, if the tone arm is lower in the front, some turntables allow you to have an adjustment on the uh, tone arm pivot that lets you lower the back so that you can, you can be level. Um, and again, this is something you would sight by eye. You can see this arm is level uh, as it sits on the album. If you happen to be lower in the front and you don't have that particular um, uh, adjustment on the arm, you can use head shell spacers or a platter mat, uh, something to bring the front of that tone arm up. And uh, again, this is uh, the next to last adjustment. Just to recap, we've 
adjusted our vertical tracking force, which is the downward pressure of the cartridge on the LP, on the album. Uh, we've adjusted the way the arm rides across the album. We've adjusted our anti-skate. We've ensured that the arm is uh, level. We've ensured that the azimuth is correct. And the last thing you're going to want to do, and this is, this is pretty important, when you move your turntable into the location that it's going to be mounted, you want to check to make sure that it's level. Level in both directions, from, um, left to right, front to back. It's very important that you have a stable base. And this one just happens to uh, have a, a homemade um, oak base that I've made for it. But where you place your turntable is very important. Um, unwanted vibrations will do several things. One, they can cause a, a needle to skip on an album, and we don't want to do that. Another thing is unwanted vibrations can transmit through the cartridge and out through your sound. Um, it's just the nature of how um, cartridges and, and turntables work. They pick up their sound and the music that you love to hear through the vibrations in the cartridge. Unwanted vibrations are going to give you unwanted sounds. So you want to make sure your table is level. It's on something sturdy where you mount it. Um, you know, a nice solid wood uh, location, uh, free from footfalls that are going to cause it to jump. Um, some people mount them on the wall. So we are ready to go. Um, I hope this has been helpful for you in basic turntable setup. We know that our arm is not going to damage our, our uh, albums in that uh, it's, it's got the right tracking force. It's tracking correctly across the album. We have the right anti-skate. We're level and we're good to go. Um, enjoy. And uh, just so you know, audiokarma.org is a wonderful forum and website where you can find loads of information and get help from other um, turntable and audio enthusiasts. Thanks for listening.